G'day fellas, I've got another kit review to show you, or an unboxing, however you want to call it. This is one of Tacom's uh, full interior King Tigers, okay, I've got three of these in the stash, not this kit, but I do have the white box, and I also, which is the Henschel turret, and I've also got um, another Henschel turret with Zimrit, okay, they've all got Zimrit, but... Um, just jumped at the opportunity when this hobby store had all three, so pretty good, got a pretty good deal because I bought three kits. But I'm just going to show you one because there isn't that much difference between this and the Henschel, besides one being a Porsche turret and the other one being a Henschel turret. So I'll give you a look at this, and you know, that way you've got a rough idea of what the other kits do consist of because they are all full interior, guys. Okay, so this is a 135th King Tiger. Um, pretty new on the market so it says real armor thickness okay um, intended for collectors of age 14 years and over models may vary from vary from image on the box and cement and paint not included yeah, that's standard with any models these days guys you don't get paint cement unless you're living back in the 70s but um yeah a little description on there there's another toy uh, two types of markings p clear parts included included full interior parts included scale thickness armor plate detail static display plastic model all hatches can be built in open or closed position okay so just a very nice artwork, try to get rid of this glare for you. Very nice artwork by um, Tacom, or Tacom, depends on how you say it. I know people say it differently around the world, but just for this video, I'm going to say Tacom, and just shows you the interior, that it is a full interior version. I'm a sucker of full interior model for some reason, I don't know why. I hate building, so <laughs> yeah, work that out. Okay, so on the lower edge of the box, or the... the the bottom long side of the box we have looks like a winter scheme um, and it tells you there okay I can't even pronounce that so you can just read that for yourself um, okay I think it gives you the dates 22nd of the 1st 1945 and as with Ryfield's kits um, Ammo Mig is really jumping on the bandwagon getting his um, brand out there um, on today's modeling market so, Colour and Info Profiles by Ammo Mig. Good on ya! And a, the sprue or the parts included inside the kit kit book is shown on the outside edge of the box. That's pretty cool. So, if you do go to the hobby shop and there is a uh, plastic sealed box and you want to know what's inside it, it actually shows on the outside and even tells us how many sprues are in each there. So, there's times two times two and everything else on there okay and these are the other two kits that I have in the stash without even having to show you okay so these two are also on my shelf um, like just beautiful kits guys I'm, I'm hearing from other modelers that there are fit issues with this kit compared to, compared to the Ming version of it but and how I see it guys is you're always going to run into problems with um, kits you know, even through the little mistakes that you through during construction, you're gonna have run into troubles and fit issues and stuff. So, um, you know, that's if that's a con, well, it's probably only a small one, and I'm not really too fussed with that. Okay, guys, so let's crack the box open. There is nothing on the bottom edge of the box on the flat side that's completely white. So let's have a look, shall we? All right. So I think I've already opened this box and had a look at it. Um, but we're going to have a very, very quick look at the instruction book. Okay, so this is, I've only, I try to keep these views down to about half an hour or less. Okay, so I open this box up and you can see just everything just falls out of it in, in this first bag here. Alright, so we do have a colour. What is this on the other side? Right, and there is a correction sheet as well in this one as well. Okay, so we've got a uh, two-sided A4, I believe it is, a uh, piece of paper, gloss, of a rough guide of what the vehicle um, should look like when painted. And there's also, um, just for your ammunition there, what colours they should be, depending on what kind you use. Okay, so you can see there, it is actually quite nice. Um, and also... 
uh, just some details of the engine itself, the colour, colour things like that. If you don't want to use this, that's completely up to you. But if you've got reference books with colour photos, um, that's even better. I guess this is more designed to help guys that don't have reference material um, on hand. Okay, so you've got all your um, your turret basket as, as well as well as all the interior of the, the main gun. Okay, so it's going to be a very nice build when this is done, guys. I, I can assure you that. Okay, and the correction sheet here is for steps 28, 50, and 55. And there's nothing else on the other side. Okay, and locating the holder. Okay, so hollow cut out. Alright, so here <clears throat> you can cut this out and basically apply it to the vehicle just so you can locate the holder. Because I'm, I'm saying, I guess, because this has zimmer it, when you put the zimmer out of the vehicle, you, you're going to lose all your locating holes. So. If you do want to keep this, if you're one of those people that don't like cutting up the instruction and you like keeping them for later on, feel free to photocopy this. This is probably another good idea. Photocopy it and then you've got it for, you know, you've always got a master copy. If you're doing other tigers, you can use this as a template. Um, so, okay, there you go. So if you don't have a photocopy, take it to work or give it to someone who does have access to a photocopier. But most people have scanners and printers at home these days. So that's another idea that you could do. And decals, these look like for the rounds, okay, for the ammunition rounds. Okay, don't quote me, but because there are so many of them, and that's the rounds are something that you do see, they're very repetitive in this build, in this kit. So, I dare say that's what they are. Okay, then you got all the markings for your vehicles uh, 301, 233, 324, and 314. Okay, so that's what you get in there as well. Okay, something I don't like seeing from these TACOM kits are PE that just floats in a plastic bag on its own, okay? Even though it's in the book, okay, same with another one, okay? These PE sheets are pretty big, you can see it by the size of my hands, but I don't have massive hands by any means, it's, it's just, um, yeah, they're pretty, pretty big sheets to be flopping around on its own without any cardboard. Um, you can see there they do have a slight curve to them just by sitting in the box and that's a yeah, it's a real, if you do get a crease in these parts that can be a real pain in the ass. Alright, so the instruction book is pretty thick, alright, so I'm going to give it a quick flick through um, just because it is a thick book and you can see already up to it's 49, there's nearly like 77 steps in this um, in this instruction book so I'm not going to go through the book in great detail guys. Um, so there is a bit of a write-up on the vehicle at the front, what it was used for, um, when it was used, um, just, you know, there's pros and cons of the vehicle during the war, just things like that. Okay, we've also got um, just some general safety um, instructions to read, applying decals, removing PE, paints and things like that. And then once again, your parts, um, your sprue map is in here on the on the second page. And then you've got beautiful CAD drawings. I'll just get rid of these PE sheets. I'll just move this to the side so they don't get bent up on me. <clears throat> Alright, so you see it's beautiful CAD drawings throughout the whole instruction book. And they are very clear, okay. When it comes to um, how correct they are, as in like, okay, we're going to use dragon instructions for, in, for instance. You know, you know, you know how bad dragon instructions can be. But if they're, if they're right and you can follow them and it's they're easy to read and there's no mistakes in the book, no, that's pretty good. I haven't built any of these TACOM kits yet, so I cannot tell you what they're like, okay? And that's just telling you the truth and being honest with you guys. I'm not going to tell you they're awesome or they're really bad because I just have had nothing to deal with it yet to this day. Okay, but so far, just flicking through it, it looks pretty nice. Um... A bit of engine details, see, yeah, just, so I'll just give you a quick flick through without sort of talking about the book too much. And then when you do get the kit for yourself, or if you do decide to get the kit for yourself, um, you can have a better look at it then. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to pretend to know everything about the King Tiger because I don't. Um, but you can see just through this illustration here that this is going to be a very busy and this thing is going to weigh quite a fair bit with all the plastic and glue added and it's all into one so it's going to be a really nice uh, looking model when you're finished so 
And you see there, there are workable hatches. Um, well, not work, but they can be positioned open or closed. But um, they all got the 61, and it's just there's that many parts in this box. It is just crazy, guys. Um, and and there you go. Step 76 and step 77 are just the final um, assemblies before calling this model complete be built um, the last two pages are just the some more paint guides and just a bit of advertisement there for the MIG paints to say buy these paints and use them on these kits because that's what you need but um, in this case I'm going to use my own paint because uh, I don't believe in buying paint sets speci specified for the kit because there's no difference between the paint I use and these paints here so um, if you don't have the paints, then go for it, be my guess, and go out and buy them. Um, but, you know, you guys who know me personally and know how much paint I have in my rack beside me, there's, yeah, I'd be mad to go and buy these paints. And also on the back, it says, you can find Tacom on Facebook.com. Okay, so that is it there. All right, so, you can see, we've straight away we'll pull out the box. We've got the... The main superstructure in two halves, okay, there, are, there is bracing on the back, um, I think, I think the last time I've seen the build is builds on Andy's Hobbies on, um, on Facebook, on YouTube, not Facebook, but yeah, he does talk about this part here being quite tricky, and he does talk about getting around it, so if you want to check out Andy's Hobbies on YouTube, and just look at his build, um, of this Tacom King Tiger. I'm not too sure if it's this one or one of the other variants, um, three variants that I have in the stash, but he does build one of these and it does look pretty good when he's done with it. So, but if you want to have a look, I'll chuck the link down in the description box just so you guys can have a squeeze as well because it's going to be a long time till I build this. But the Zimmer on here looks quite nice. Um, it's all random. It, it doesn't look all you know, too even, so that's another nice scene. You can see on the front here as well. Uh, if I just bring ramp down a little bit more and you can see um, what I mean it just looks still looks random it doesn't look too okay that a computer's done it and there you go it looks perfect but yeah it does look very random same with the turret okay and that's what that template's for just to get the locating holes for the spare track links that go on the side okay so that goes on there and you just got all these reinforced which is nice I like how Tacom's done this um, how they put this all this bracing throughout the um, the main the turret so it doesn't flex and warp. Okay, and even the zimmer on the front. So if you hate putting on zimmer it, um, like with a putty putty knife and a you know, putty itself, it's it's pretty good how they've done that. It's work that you don't have to do. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with it, guys. Like I I'd be happy to paint straight over that. Okay, so. More Zimmerated parts, Sprue F. Okay, so we got uh, back of the tank. Looks like a some kind of rear hatch at the rear. That looks like the rear of the tar. No, that's the rear of the turret there. That looks like the front glacier plate on the front down below. I believe. Yep. Okay, so and here's all your parts for your turret and everything like that as well. So. That's pretty nice. Being interior as well, there are um, interior details on these parts also, so that is also a bonus. Uh, Sprue Q. Okay, so very, very nice small little details here. And it's weird how the numbers are on the tabs themselves. This is something I haven't seen before. Never really noticed the last time I looked through the kit, but Plastic feels a little bit soft, so just be careful when cutting these off the sprue, because um, some of these parts are, well, they, they look very delicate, and they can be easily be broken or cut in half if you're not careful with your cutters. But just, if you can see here, the parts are actually very, very well detailed. Um, and it looks like some kind of drive shaft as well for the interior. Uh, what else we got? Uh, look at this. Oh, this looks like part of the engine. All these small engine tear tails from hoses and yeah, 
looks like a steering wheel there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's nice. Fuel tanks. Looks like part of the motor. Okay. A lot of these parts look similar to when I built the interior Tiger 1. Okay, I'm not saying these parts are exactly the same, but just by looks the part that looks like part of the the side of the gearbox anyway. Um, that's the interior. Looks like one of the interior braces for inside the main hole. Okay, so really not much to see there because you know it's nice detail, but there's really it's not like it just pops out and you pops out in front and says, Look at me, look at me. Right, here we go. Sprue end. Okay, so this looks like the rear engine compartment. Alright, so it's very nice detail there. If I sort of the camera wants to focus, I can show you. But that's really nice. More of the engine. Okay, these are all engine parts, I believe. And that looks like to be the side, maybe. Not too sure what part of the side, interior of the side, or. Okay, so that is that there. Okay, so here are the, here's some more of the interior for the torsion bars and things like that. You can see there's all these little details on the side here also that are quite nice. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of sub-assembly and painting and then assembling again. So, yeah, it's just it's not one of those straightforward build and paint. There's a lot of, yeah, just back and forth, back and forth between painting and building and assembly. So... If you don't like doing that, it's probably not a kit for you, especially if you're a new model. If you're new into the hobby, I wouldn't recommend this kit because this will probably throw you off from building a model because it's just that busy. But if you game and you want to have a go at it, um, you're a brave man or a brave model because it could be a female attempting this as well, so I'm not trying to be sexist here. So yeah, you're brave, but whatever, <laughs> whatever you're going to have a go at. Alright, so l -sprue. Looks like we've got barrels, uh, looks like, yeah, the rear basket, looks like part of the breech on the rear, okay, and the machine gun, I like what they've done here, they've, well, uh, you could say they've gone overboard, like overkill with all the extra plastic to keep, to support that part of the machine gun to stop from breaking, there's nothing wrong with that, if they want to go ahead and um, be careful, not to, or to protect the parts, not to break during transit and storage like that. Yeah, that's a really nice touch by Royfields. I do like, no, not Royfields, uh, by Tacom. That's a really nice touch there. I just done a Royfields review. That's why I just said Royfields. Um, so, looks like more of the rear hatch here as well. And, yeah, that looks pretty nice. Still lots to go, and probably about 10 minutes to go to try and finish this video up. And we've got G-Sprue, we've got front fenders or front guards, okay. We do have some, uh, I think they're, uh, are they vents, vent covers. We've got some of the, uh, we've got the jack here. Now, a lot of kits these days tend to go for the dragon style jack, as um, Adam Mann calls it. If you do watch Adam Mann's reviews, that's pretty much... Um, how we what he calls them, and it's true because how they how the uh, the jacks are are assembled is pretty much the same as how Dragon does it. If you ask them how they do it, that's how you put them together. So um, tow cables, okay, tow cables are pretty nice. Got some shovels with some really nice rivet detail, and this is something I haven't seen on on um, shovels before, like just rivet detail on the end on the end covers here. So that's pretty nice. Okay, um, pliers or bolt cutters, what do you want to call them? Yeah, bolt cutters. Um, pistol grip separate. It's probably a bit overkill. Um, probably over engineered there. I think they could have put that with that. But, you know, if it. Yeah, it's, it's probably just. Whoever designed the kit has gone up that way. Alright, so we've got some uh, hatches here. Some grab handles, and that looks like the interior vent on the inside for the turret. See, it's very nicely detailed. If I bring some light down here, yeah, you can see 
focus as you can see that's really really nice um, can't knock that piece apart as well and it's, and, it's, and it's how they've it's how they've done their their parts how you cut them off like it's more and more today you're seeing that a lot they're not just like putting cutoff points is willy-nilly anywhere then you've got like a huge amount of cleanup and even like where even small parts like the cutoff points are very fine they're not thick and chunky like the old kits used to get you know like the old kits they're just thick and fat <clears throat> and they're just everywhere and it's just an absolute nightmare to clean up especially when it comes to road wheels track links and things like that but you see how tack ohms you know, just you tell the difference between a big piece like big flat piece like that they've gone with a big bulky point and very fine things like um you know knobs and wheels and things like that and even to grab handles like they're just the cutoff points are very very tiny and they just very narrow so that's another good thing that tack on have have done so that's a big thumbs up there from me uh turret okay wow okay two-piece barrel um and no metal barrels in this so yep two-piece plastic barrel so if you want to go for a metal barrel by aftermarket that's probably something you would have to do and then we got grill cup um rear grill um braces on the back i think we have pe and the details on the for the turret are absolutely gorgeous here guys like you can just see this is like you know, it's just very very stunning and then the turret wow that's nice as well that's awesome okay and once again, what I was talking about before, just the cutoff points here on the ring here. This is very minute. The muzzle brake, how they've done that as well, it's just pretty cool. What the and just see how they where they've put the points. They've just thought about where you know <laughs> minimal cleanup and when to sand off. You're not going to lose any detail. So they have thought long and hard about how the parts are laid out on these sprues. So when you do cut them out, yeah, you, this 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 not going to be too difficult. Okay, so cracking through the screws, we still got quite a few screws to go. Um, what do we got here? We got these are radiator parts. Okay, so you got the fans and all that, the radiator grills. Uh, looks like also batteries, battery boxes maybe. Okay, I haven't built a full interior King Tiger before, so I'm really not too familiar with the interior parts. Um, I've built a couple of King uh, standard Tiger ones, and I can look at those and sort of get the nice parts now. But this, I have no idea. Okay, side fenders. We've got more tow ropes. We've got the exhaust covers. Um, just front hatches, rear grill, rear grills, engine um, hatch. Okay, and side fenders. So. These are very nice too. I mean, I can't fault this this kit so far. Okay, as in part detail wise, fit issues, no idea. Like I said earlier on, but as the parts look, how the parts look, the details are really really nice, guys. So as for that department goes, I'll give that a thumbs up. Clear parts. Okay, we're gonna do like the, the cutting mat test. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so looking at the lines for the parts. They're still clear, there's no blurring involved. So you've got the vision blocks here, the sight glasses are very nice. Um, very clear, there's no weirdness to, to look at the glass, so that's another part. We won't go too much with the clear parts. And then we have a piece of paper. Another correction, so don't lose this, I've just found this at the bottom. So we've got the upper hole. Uh, so you're supposed to be drilling out holes on the front, on the rear, 1.6 mils. Um, so keep a look out for that part so that's on the main superstructure of the tank road wheels and torsion bars and uh really swing arms and everything else two-piece exhausts ew i hate that why can they do it one um look at everything else where the the kit looks yeah they should have done that in a one-piece mold so it's a real shame there so it's gonna be a bit of a cleanup um uh, but you know as with arm, us armor modelers Got a join line, fill in with mud, or in this case rust, so they'll hopefully cover that up. And then we're in D shackles and drive sprocket, things like that. really nice. 
so we won't go too much there we've all seen wheels and we've all seen drive sprockets before and torsion bars and d-shackles so that is that sprue there guys um, another bag of goodies okay these are not okay this is our sprue and new sprue okay um, Browns are really nice. I like how they're not separated. It's going to make it a bitch to paint because you've got all the mounting mounting brackets here to hold all the um, rounds in place. So there is going to be a bit of fiddly painting. Um, how you paint it and your style of painting is completely up to you how what steps you will take to get these things painted up. Um, but they look nice. Um, there's... These are all one piece, okay, so you don't have to join these halves together or anything, um, which is also a nice touch there. So instead of sanding every single brown, you've only got to sand, you know, four pieces and or four points and you're done. Um, some of here double ups here, or just doubles, and then you've got some very fine parts on the bottom here as well, which you're going to have to deal with. And there's the floor of the turret, okay, so that's pretty nice how it's one piece, so you to glue stuff on there as well. Alright, so there are those two sprues, just trying to get a move on guys, because almost out of time for the recording on this video. Uh, track links are like magic tracks, which is cool, because I love magic tracks. Alright, so we've got some tracks here, Magic Track Style, um, supplied in this kit. So, we've got the cleats and we've got the spaces. So, that's pretty cool. Um, whether these aren't detailed enough for you, you may have to go with frills or something else um, of your choosing. Okay, so that is pretty much what's in the box. The box is empty. That's the unboxing of the Tacom uh, King Tiger. Porsche turret. Um, the kit number is two A four six. Okay, so it's what, whatever that is. Is that right? Let me double check. Oh, there you go. Two A four six. That is a kit number of this model. So, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit the sub button down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Um, gives me an idea of what you guys want to see, what you don't want to see. If, um, feel free to comment down below if you've got any questions. Um, and have a great weekend. Happy modeling. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.